Hello there and welcome. If you're using Stable Diffusion then Focus is probably the easiest of all the UIs to do high quality face swapping with. However, Focus offers four main ways to face swap which is just too much choice for me. I tend to use Focus for certain tasks as it lets me just get in, do the job quickly and easily, produce high quality results and get back out. So in this video I'll compare all four Focus main face swap methods to finally find out which method produces the best result. Then whenever I need to face swap with Focus I don't need to think, I just do it and run with the best method. I'll start off by jumping straight into the four methods and results. Then I'll get into the details and walk through the step by step process for each of the four face swap methods. I'll be running through everything on a standard local installer Focus running on a Windows 11 PC. So let's crack on. The four main Focus face swap methods are 1. Text prompt face swap 2. Inpaint face swap 3. Image variation face swap and 4. Control Net Pyrocanny Face Swap. Okay, now we know the four face swap methods, let's compare their results. This is our face image that we used for all four methods. In fourth place, we have the inpaint face swap method. In third place, we have the Control Net Pyrocanny Face Swap method. In second place, we have the image variation face swap method. And the overall winner in first place is the text prompt face swap method. So now you know the results from our face swap comparison testing. If you want to see more details of each result then take a look at that method section of the video. I'll put all the chapter timestamps in the description below for you. Anyway, it's only fair to add a couple of important disclaimers to these results. First, this was obviously a very limited test using specific images. Different images may produce very different results. Second, we didn't use the power of the additional text prompt for the last three methods. This would almost certainly have produced improved results for those methods. Third, depending on your particular use case, a particular face swap method may be more appropriate or even the only option. That's why it's a good idea to know and understand all four of these quick methods so that you can then apply the best one as a specific use case arises for you. Fourth, I only used AI generated source images which tends to work better and more consistently in focus. Using non-AI images tends to give quite a substantial range of results so I avoided these for comparison purposes. I think the biggest surprise for me during this comparison test was how well the text prompt method did and how badly the inpaint method did. Having done a fair bit of face swapping using Automatic 1111, I always found that the inpainting method produced excellent results, perhaps due to the fine tuning you're able to do in Automatic 1111. Anyway, now you know the results, let's get into the step by step processes for each of the four methods. Let's first get our base face image regenerated to use with all the face swap methods. Open Focus. Let's tick the Advanced checkbox to keep these settings shown. I've previously generated an appropriate face image so let's regenerate it to use. We'll paste the image's metadata into the text prompt box and then click the Load Parameters button to populate the fields with the face image metadata. For settings, we're using a 1024 by 1024 square aspect ratio no negative prompt and the original image seed. For styles, we're keeping the standard V2, Enhance and Sharp styles. For models, we're sticking with the default Juggernaut XL model and the SDXL Offset LoRa. Then we just hit the Generate button to regenerate the image. Let's take a look at our base face image. It's a good face image. A clear close up of the face looking directly forward with all facial features clearly visible. Ok, let's move on to the different face swap methods. Let's start off with method number 1, the text prompt face swap. We can see the basic text prompt that was used for our face image. 
Let's edit the text prompt to have her sitting in a coffee shop wearing a white turtleneck sweater. Now we need to specify the face image as the face to be swapped onto the new image generation by way of an image prompt. We'll tick the Input Image checkbox below the prompt box. Then we'll select the Image Prompt tab. We'll drag our face image from the Generation Image box above into the first Image Prompt box. We could use multiple different variations of our face image which sometimes gives me better results but we'll just use the single face image this time. Then we'll scroll to the bottom of the image boxes and tick the Advanced checkbox. A number of additional settings will open up below our image box. We'll select the Face Swap option. The default stop at and wait values will change accordingly. Stop at is the point that we want to stop swapping in our face onto the new image generation. Setting it at 1 will continue to swap in our face right up to the last point. Anything between 0.9 and 1 generally gives me the better results, but have a play around with different values. Let's change this to 1. Weight refers to the amount of influence that our face image prompt has. Anywhere between 0.8 and 1 tends to work well for me. Anything too high tends to introduce distortions into the final image. Let's move this up to 0.9. We'll leave the resolution and seed of our original face image, although you can play with these as well. Then we just hit the Generate button. Let's compare the result. On the left, we have our original face image, and on the right, we have our face swapped image that we just generated using a modified text prompt and image prompt. I think the result is excellent. It's not perfect, but very close indeed. Her skin tone and eye colour is slightly different, but that could be due to the different lighting that you'd find in a coffee shop. Her facial structure and fine facial details have been replicated incredibly precisely, even down to the wrinkles around her mouth and eyes. If we did a quick sharpen of the image, I think the result would be even further improved. The generated image, I think, could absolutely pass as our face image, if we posted it on social media. So I'll give this method a solid 9 out of 10. Let's move on to method number 2, the InPaint face swap. I've regenerated our original face image and added it as our face image to the image prompt, as before. We'll keep all the settings as they were for the first method, so that we can get a fairer comparison result. You can either leave the text prompt empty or provide some specific pointers to tweak and improve the generated image. We'll leave it blank so that we can get a raw gauge of what the InPaint method produces. Anyway, onto the pose that we want to put her in. We'll use the generated image from the first method for our pose image for all of the remaining methods so that we can compare each method's results on a more like-for-like -like basis. To do this, we select the InPaint or OutPaint tab. We'll drag our Pose image into the Image box. Then we use the Brush tool to paint over the Pose image's face to create a mask into which our face will be swapped. If we hover over the Info icon in the top left of the Image box, we can see some handy masking shortcuts. Anyway, let's do a quick mask. The masking doesn't need to be perfect, but it's best to go slightly outside of the face line to improve face blending of the face being swapped in. Then, to enable the InPaint option and our mask, we'll select the Advanced tab in the top right of the screen. Then check the Developer Debug Mode option. Then we'll select the Control tab, and in the first box of settings, we'll check the Mixing Image Prompt and InPaint option. Now we just hit the Generate button. Let's compare the result. On the left, we have our original face image. And on the right, we have our face swapped image that we just generated using inpainting and an image prompt. I don't think the result is very good. There's a loose sense of similarity. She looks a bit older in the generated image though, and the facial structure is just not right. 
the face looks more rounded than the original face image. It's worth noting when choosing a pose image, facial structure will be improved if you choose a pose image with a similar facial structure. The eyes are not as green in the face image either. The other finer facial details are pretty good though, including the wrinkles. We could go back and tweak some of the masking and add in some specific guidance in the text prompt to improve the end result. But on this occasion, we're looking for a raw comparison between the different methods. I'm doubtful whether this image could pass as our face image if we posted it on social media. So I'll give this method a 6 out of 10. Let's move on to method number 3, the image variation face swap. In my opinion, the variation function isn't really a true face swap method. It's really aimed at producing variations of the same image, in a similar way that Midjourney offers you a variation option after you generate an image. However, since so many people use it as their face swap method, I thought I'd include it in this test for comparison purposes. I've regenerated our original face image again and added it as our face image to the image prompt as before with the same settings. Again, you can either leave the text prompts empty or provide some specific pointers to tweak the generated image. Again, we'll leave it blank. Onto the pose image. This time, we'll select the Upscale or Variation tab. Then we'll drag in the same pose image into the image box. In the Upscale or Variation Settings box to the right of the pose image, we'll select the Very Subtle option. We now need to enable the Upscale or Variation function in the Developer Debug Mode settings. On the Advanced tab, we'll tick the Developer Debug Mode checkbox. Then go to the Control tab and check the Mixing Image Prompt and Vary Upscale option. Now we just hit the Generate button. Let's compare the result. On the left, we have our original face image. And on the right, we have our face swapped image that we just generated using image variation and an image prompt. I think the result is very good. As expected, it's pretty close to the text prompt result, but not quite as good. There's a couple of funky areas in the image though, such as the right eye and teeth. The fine face details are pretty much there, but not such an exact match as we got with the text prompt method. I think this image could pass as our face image if we posted it on social media. So I'll give this method a decent 8 out of 10. Let's move on to method number 4, the ControlNet Pyrocanny face swap. I've regenerated our original face image again and added it as our face image to the image prompt as before with the same settings. Again, you can either leave the text prompt empty or provide some specific pointers to tweak the generated image. Again, we'll leave it blank. Onto the pose image. We'll drag in the same pose image into the second image box on the image prompt tab next to our face image. Below the pose image, we'll select the Pyrocanny option. We'll leave the stop at and wait settings at their default of 0.5 and 1. There's also a ControlNet CPDS option but it generally produces very similar results to Canny, so I've excluded it in this comparison test. Now we just hit the Generate button. Let's compare the result. On the left, we have our original face image, and on the right, we have our face swapped image that we just generated using ControlNet Pyrocanny and an image prompt. I think the result is pretty good, but certainly not fantastic. It's probably the oversized eyes that throw me off. Apart from the eyes, the overall similarity is actually pretty high. Some of the finer details are a bit off, like some of the wrinkles, the eyes of course, and the teeth. The eyes are not the right shape, size or colour, and the teeth protrude a little too much. I think the generated image could possibly pass as our face image if we posted it on social media and people were scrolling and not looking too closely. So I'll give this method a respectable 7 out of 10. Now you know which focus face swap method won in this comparison test and also know the step by step process for each of the four methods. 
Now you can go and face swap with confidence and added knowledge. Anyway, hope you found this video helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.